Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, um, where today I'm going to do the exercise that I do once or twice a week, um, which I, I I don't really look forward to, but I'm going to do my best for you. I'm going to take on what I suspect will be a monstrously difficult puzzle. Now, this is a puzzle that's been sent in by Ethan Morgan, and we've, um, we've done one of Ethan's puzzles before. Uh, this is an anti-knight's move Sudoku. Um, so what that means is that if we are, I mean, a good example, I guess, is these sixes here. There could not be a six in this position because it's a knight's move away from this six. So by knight's move, we mean a chess move. So, so two in that direction, one up. Um, so this restriction is quite hard to get your head around. Um, it leads to um, some very surprising logic. Um, and when, when I did Ethan's puzzle last time, I remember it, it took me a long time to finish the puzzle. Now, it took me a long time last time. Ethan is very pleased to tell us that he's made some improvements to his, uh, his, his generator. And this is the hardest puzzle the generator managed to come up with. And it's monstrously hard, apparently. Um, so uh, what he does, I think, uh, insist that his uh, generator does, though, is it, it should only use sort of normal-ish techniques. So there shouldn't be anything like absolutely monstrous in here, but I still suspect this will be a very long video. Um, just an appeal for those of you who enjoy me going through this purgatory, and if you're in a position to do so, you might consider sponsoring us on Patreon. It's a couple of bucks a month, um, and for that you actually get one of our own puzzles as well. And for $3 a month you get a video on how to solve that puzzle. Um, so I think it's quite good value, um, and it really helps uh, Mark and I out. Um, Right, let's go. Let's think about this. Now, what I'm going to do is probably some more extensive notation than I would ordinarily do. Um, so rather than t classic Snyder notation, where I just notate if a number can go in two positions in a 3x3 three three block, I think I'm going to notate all the positions, um, if I can limit them a little bit. So certainly three, three positions and four positions, I'm quite happy to notate. Um, in this form of puzzle because quite often, bizarrely enough, um, you can eliminate digits in a knight's move Sudoku um, you know, even when there are three possibilities and even four possibilities. That's threes in one of those three squares. Ah, so fours on this top right box. Look at that. So, obviously we can rule out these four squares normally, but this square can't be a four because of the four here, and this square can't be a four. So there must be a four in one of those two squares. Ah, now look at the bottom, two fours here. We get a similar sort of thing. The important thing is that the knight's move removes this square. This square cannot be a four. So in fact, fours get locked into those two squares, and that resolves a digit. We get a digit in the grid. Fantastic. Um, ah, we get two two digits. That's a four as well. Simple Sudoku. Ah, Ethan, maybe this isn't as difficult as you thought. Um, I shouldn't have said that. Right, let's look at fours in this this part of the grid. We've got fours ruled out from these three squares by normal rules so we can have a four here, here or here, three positions um, where should we look now threes here ah. those two squares. Now look, there's a, these two squares see each other. So one tip I'll give you, which might prove to be complete nonsense, um, I almost said a rude word there, um, is that if you get this sort of restriction, it's worth testing. Um, let's test this one. Um, because quite often, uh, let's try, I'll put big numbers in so we can go through it and then I can use the undo function in the software. I should have said, by the way, if you want to try the puzzle, just click the link under the video and you can have a go at uh, this as well. Now this 3 is interesting because it rules out the 3 from this square, so that's going to force this square to be a 3. 
and uh, hang on, there's a problem. There is a problem here because look, I have a three here and a three here. Now this three here sees this square, so that's going to mean there's a three there, and that means there's a three here because we pencil mark threes into those two squares. Now where do we put a three in this block? And the only position it can go into is there, and that sees this three by the knight's move. So as I wondered, we can remove the three from this square. Now, I wonder, let's keep testing this. Let's try this square. And the reason, um, the reason by the way I picked this square is that it eliminates this square from being a 3. And the reason I like that is that it's going to marry up with the 3's positions here. So I know by choosing this 3, I'm forcing a 3 into one of these two squares. And in fact, you can see this is a problem. Um, 3 here leads to 3 in those two squares. Now look, where, because we haven't yet placed a 3 in column 8, the 3 in column 8 has to be in one of these two squares because of the pencil mark 3s marrying up here. But we can't put a 3 here because this 3 sees both this, these squares. And we can't put a 3 here because this square sees both these squares. That's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So this has to be a 3. Um, and now we can... This can't be a 3 now. So there must be a three. Ah, oh, I wanted to use a different notation. Three is in one of those two squares, and uh, we do anything over on the right here. I guess we can do those two. It's not so bad. Okay. Right. What next? fives. This five here and this five here interact in a way that would ordinarily be quite boring. But this five sees this square and this square. So we can pencil mark fives into those two positions. And there must be a five now running down this part of the column. Um, now can we, can we do better than that? Oh hang on, we've got fives on this box too. Let's just pencil those fives in. Ah, and this one's not possible. Look, again, it's similar logic. You have to test these possibilities in these puzzles because there's some really odd things that happen. And our five here, let me show you. We need a five in either this square, which sees this five, or this square, which sees this five. So that one we can rule out. We get a 5 in one of these two squares and let's just have a think about what that's going to mean. So if this is the 5 then this square would have to be a 5 because this is a knight's move away from this one. And if this is a 5 ah, we get I think all of those positions seem to be possible. Yeah, you might disagree, but I think I think that's right. So well hang on, actually I I can go further with the threes here, can't I? This this square can't be a three. So if that's a 3, that's a 3, and I get the same problem in this central 3x3 three three block that I have before, so I should have spotted that. This is a 3. Um, now, now this square, of course, it sees this square and this square and this square, so mm, it's probably worth pencil marking in. So it, all around the corners of this 3x3 three three block.
6, I suppose. Might as well lock the 6's into those two squares. Ah, and, this, and we've got a similar trick to that we had with the 5's. Look, this 6 and this 6 interact because these two squares cannot be a 6. We get 6's there. And therefore... Well, I can't see a way of eliminating that down, so let's do that. The six is on this side. Because this six sees this square, we get sixes in those two positions. Now this is nice, because the sixes now in this 3x3 three three block are definitely in row 1 and row 2. And the sixes in this 3x3 three three block are definitely in row 1 and row 2. Now we know row 3 needs a six. So that's going to have to be in one of those two squares. Now I just wonder. Whether there's a way of um, disambiguating there. Let's just have a quick stare at this. Six. I can't, I don't think the sixes are going to give me, um, give me what we need here. This three is interesting, because this three, it eliminates this square, of course, by the knight's move. So if we put a three here, we know this three will be the real three. Oh, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Of course. So look. If this is a three, oops, oh my goodness, if this is a three, this is a three. And now, watch what happens in this box. We can't put a three here anymore, so we'd have to put a three there. And so we get the knights move apart again. So this is not a three. Therefore, this is a three. And that means this is a six. This is a three. Let's remove the threes from over here now. Um, now this six sees this six at the top. You need to go slowly here. But it's very, very easy to make a mistake um, when doing these Sudokus. Um, this must be a six. Uh, Oh, now we can fill in this block. I've seen that. Let me just check whether there's anything more we can do in this 3x3, three three, though. Okay, well, we need 2 and 7 to complete the, this 3x3, three three, and there's a 7 here, so nothing difficult. We can put a 7 in there. Now, this square sees this 7, so we can put 7s into those two positions. And this 7... And this 7 interacts to force 7s into those two squares. 7. I think all those 3 can be 7 at the moment. 7. Now this must be a 2. Now, can we do anything with this 2? So you can see this 2 sees this square, this square, and this square. So we, there's 3 positions left for a 2. That's highlight that. We may as well. I don't anticipate it's going to be hugely important, but um, okay. Nine can only go in two positions in the top row because this square, I'm going to actually highlight that this square can only be five or eight. And I'm going to grey in cells if I get them down to doubles. Um,
Right, let's look at fives. Fives, we can pencil, pencil mark some fives in here. Not many, but we have managed to eliminate four cells with this five. So let's put some fives into those squares. Oh, now it might be worth testing this. I can't quite do it in my head, but let's just look at what happens if this is a 5. If this is a 5, this becomes a 5, this becomes a 5. This square can't be a 5 now because it sees this square. So there's a 5 in one of these two cells, therefore this becomes a 5. It's all getting a bit much, isn't it? Um, can we go any further than this? Five, five, this would have to be a five. Oh, hang on, we can go. That does cause a problem. It causes a problem up here. I was looking down here where it can it can work, but it causes this to be a five. Let's just double check that. I'm going to do that again because it didn't really flow. So if this is a five, that is a five, that's a five. I'm happy with that. Now there's definitely a 5 in one of these two squares, which means this is a 5, which means this is a 5, which means this is a 5. Good lord, it is right. Right, okay, so this is not a 5. It's not even that helpful, but it does lock a 5. Well, I suppose, no, it gives us this digit. So this, one of these two is a 5 now. So this square, which I've pencil marked, now has to be an 8. And this square has to be a 5, and this is a 6. That rules out a 6 from that square, look. 6 is now form this box shape. This box shape is always annoying if you get it in a, a Knight's Move Sudoku, because you, you can't do anything with it. You know, you know it's not going to be resolved by Knight's Moves um, uh, when you've got all the other digits. These are the only 6s obviously left to place. Um, now the five here. Now this five here rebounds back and hits this five, and that forces this to be a five. Um, I'm going to pencil mark more fives in, I think, because fives in. Those three squares I think can be five. I'm not seeing why not. And we got this eight up here, so there's an eight along here, and we need five and ah, hang on, we've got a five here, so this is the five now over on this side. Nine. This must be a one-two pair. Let's make sure we do it in grey. Turn that to white again. This five is ruling out this five. And this five. So there's a five in one of these two squares, which rules out this five. We get another five down at the bottom. Two. Um, now, what do we need into these two squares? One and two, is that right? And this, look, that two sees this square. So this cannot be 2, therefore this is 2, and this is 1. But to remove the 2's from those squares, we've got 7, 8, and 9 along here. So this is an 8 or a 9 only. 7, 8, 9, this is 7, 8, 9. Now, uh, this 2 is quite powerful because of the effect it has on this block. It rules out this square, this square, this square, and this square. So we get the pencil mark twos into those two positions, twos into one of those three squares. Just checking whether these twos see anything else. Don't think that they do. And over here, three possible positions for twos. Does that sound correct? Um, So 
So, what can we do next? Um, oh, well, what we can do, I mean, this, this I don't think this will be terribly helpful, but it's an interesting point. This square here cannot be a 7, 8, or a 9, because if it is, it rules out this, this square, although it only sees this one vertically, it sees these two by knight's moves. So if I put a 7 in here, the implication would be none of these squares can be 7. Same for 8, same for 9. So this square is more restricted than it first looks. It can, it can be a 1, I think. And it obviously can be a 5. I've got a 5 pencil marked. But it can't be 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So that is a pair, that square. Um, now I want to notate that like this. 5 here. Pencil mark fives in. We haven't pencil marked the ones into this block. I'm going to do that as well. So this one here sees this square, this square, and this square. So the ones are in three positions in this block. Uh, this square is interesting. Look, that sees an eight and a nine from the top block. So what can this be? One, two, this can only be a one or a two. This square sees a nine. Let's check this one. One, four, five, one, four, no, one, four, seven, nine. One, four, seven then into this square. Ah, it sees that square. One, four into this square. So that's another double. And this square sees the eight. So let's check this one as well. Um, this can be two. Ah, uh, bother. Just seeing I can pencil mark fours because of these fours here. Let's do that. But unfortunately, I think this square can be two, four, or five. Um, it can't be three, it can't be six, it can't be seven, it can't be eight, and it can't be nine. So this square, this square is nearly good. And it has a lot of power, this square, because you can see that um, by picking a value for this square, I'm affecting um, fives and sevens in particular. Uh, because, let me show you, um, if I put a four here, I can immediately place a five here and a seven here. Now let's just take a quick stare at this and see whether or not that's going to give us anything. Um, fives. The interesting square here is this one. Because this five now forces that to be a five. And now this is a five. Now we have to remember here, I must not do anything that puts a 7 in this square. If a 7 ends up in this square, the puzzle is going to break. Um, now why do I say that? It's because this, this square sees the 7s in this square. I think, I think this is going to run into a problem. Um, so the two sevens here are going to force a seven into one of these two squares. So we know, because this cannot be a seven, there'll be a seven in one of these four squares. There can't be a seven in the top row here, so this square would have to be a seven. This square, therefore, would have to be a four. And that's going to lead to a... Oh, no. Yes, it is. It's going to lead to a repeated four in the column. Let's go through that again. Um, I, I appreciate that is fairly dense logic. So let me um, let me show you. By putting a four in this square, forces the five and the seven. Now the thing that was interesting me here was that we get this arrangement of the fives, and I know this square must not be a seven. If this square is a seven, it breaks this box. So I know the seven is down here somewhere. Don't really care where it goes. I just know it's in either row eight or row nine. 
Now over here, because we have a 7 here and here, and this square sees this, I know the 7 in this box is also locked into row 8 or row 9. So I know that over here, the only place a 7 can go from the pencil markings is this square. But the moment I put a 7 in there, that forces this to be a 4, and now where do I put a 4 in this block? The only place is going to clash. So I went through that a couple of times because it is complicated, but now that I'm hoping will be a nice thing for us to notice. So there's no 4 in this square now, which means this is a 4 because we have 4, 4, and this 4. Once this isn't a 4, this is a 4. And this is a pair. This is a 2 5 pair, and we can put it in grey. And this is not a 4. It's 4 in one of these two squares. Ah, okay. And we've got, again, we've got this box pattern that I talked about earlier. And we've got all the other 4s placed. So this, this is not going to be resolved by, uh, by the Knight's Move logic. Ah, but look, we've got, we've got something completely independent of Knight's Move here. Let's have a look at these grey cells. Think about if they form a pattern you recognise. Because although this is a knight's move Sudoku, this is a Y-wing pattern. This is a bent triple on the numbers 1, 2 and 5. And where we get a bent triple like this, where each of the cells involved is in a pair, we can look at the pivot cell, which is this cell. This cell sees this square and sees this square. It's the only cell that sees both the other two squares. We call it the pivot. Let's think about what this does. So this could be a 2. If it's a 2, that square is a 1. If it's a 5, this square is a 1. So there is either a 1 here or a 1 here. Now that means this square, which I've pencil marked in as a 1, is not a 1. So that means this square isn't a 1 either. Let's just check this square. Um, so this square can now be 2. Ah, this square can still be 2, 8 or 9. So this, this point must be interesting. So we've now got the 1 in one of these two squares. So if this is a 1, does that break anything? Uh, yes, it does. Look, this, this square here can't be a 1. Let's put it in and I'll show you. So if this is a 1, obviously now this square is a 1. And now look, we have a 1 up here. So where are we going to put the 1 in this 3x3 three three block? Well, there's only one square that is a possible candidate, and it's that one. But the problem is that's a knight's move away from this one. So that is not a 1, which means this is the 1. Um, now, in, doing, in placing this one here, I've just displaced a 5. So that is a 5, this is a 2. Um, five, 5, this must be a 5 now. Uh, let's remove 5 from that square. 2, 2, ah, now 2, 2, this square can't be a 2 because it's a knight's move away. So that's a 2. 2, 2. The twos are now locked into one of those two squares in this 3x3 three three block. And the ones are locked into one of these two positions. And this can't be a 3. I don't know why I've still got a 3 pencil marked in there. So this is 7, 8, 9. Now this square sees an 8. So this is a 7 or 9. And we can grey it in. These two squares are seeing nothing. So we can't grey them in. We can fill in the options. Six, five. I think we've done all the five fives now. So actually this well we will have done in a second. You can see this square here has to be a five because it's the only place a five can go in the box. Uh, so there's now a two in one of these two squares. annoying me. And now 
we have another grid scale. I'm just looking at the time on the video, it's already up to 30 minutes, so uh, apologies about this. Um, So this one, this can still be two, eight, or nine. This one is can only be two or nine. I guess we put that in. Okay. Ah, and that, that's actually we can resolve this. Look, this is two or nine, but it sees the the only places a two can go in this central box is this square, which sees this square, and this square, which sees this square. So wherever we put the two in this box, it eliminates the two from that square. So that's a nine. Um, nine. Nine down here. So this is now a two or eight. This is a two or eight. And we can gray them in. Nine, nine. Nine must be in one of these two squares in the central box because of the nine here eliminating the nine from that square. a minute. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, okay. Now let's have a look. We know in this block the 2 is either here or here. Therefore in, in this block you can see hopefully wherever the 2 ends up it sort of elim it eliminates its row counterpart and its night move counterpart. So these two squares can never contain a 2 in column 7. This 2 eliminates this square from being a 2. So there's no 2 in these three squares. There's no 2 in this square because that sees that square. So this is actually the only position in column 7 that can contain a 2. So now what can we do with that, if anything? One, three, four, seven. So this square is a pair on one and three. Ah, but okay, this is a fairly simple elimination now. Obviously, if this is a one, what is the implication? Well, where do we put a 1 in the central box then? Only in that square. Now that's a knight's move away from the square, so we can't do that. That's not allowed. So this is not a 1, so it must be a 3. This is not a 3. 3, 3. This must be a 3. This is not a 3. Nine's now locked into two positions down here. One, two, six, and eight. Six. One, two. This square here is a six or an eight. This square here is a one or a two. So we've got the seven, eight, nine over here. Um, two, six, two. Ah. Um, right, and this must be 147 down here. Good snooker score. Not one I've ever had. Um, just checking whether or not I can eliminate anything further. I can't see how to, so let's fill in 147. We can remove 4 from this one because of the 4 there. 
So this forms a 147 triple. And that would still leave us to place 2689 into, into the open positions in this 3x3. Three three. So now we're going to have to think again, I think. Um, time is up to 35 minutes now. So maybe we can force this now. This square is interesting because obviously it's a pair. But if it's a two, that has a surprising effect on this three by three block because it removes two from these two squares and this square. We know this is a one, four, seven triple. So it would actually force a two down here, which in turn forces a two here. Now, does this work? So as the, obviously this is a one-two pair. So now these two squares cannot be one. So you'd have to have a one there. So you'd have one, one, one. Is that, does that look like it works? No, it doesn't work because now we've got nowhere to put fours. Because, uh, let me undo that a little bit. In fact, it might be easier. Um, I chain that right back. So two here, two here forces two here. That's all fine. Forces two there, forces four here. This is the important one because now this is box shape of fours, that forces a four into this square. So now, when we think about the effect that the one has, we know that the one down here is in one of these two squares, in this box. We know the one over here is in the same rows, row eight, row nine. So we know, in theory, that the one in this box must be either here or here. But the problem is this two puts a one into this square and this square sees this and this. So this just is broken, absolutely broken. I don't know, I don't want to go back too far here. Uh, I want to put a seven back in there, I think, and take out the four. So all of that shows this square here is a one. And this square here must be a two. That means this is an eight, this is a two. Um, let's remove the one from this square it's a six or an eight and gray it in. Now hopefully we can now, I mean the puzzle's so constrained, I'm hoping we'll finish it now. So this is a, this can't be a two anymore. So this down here must be a two. Two, two. This must be a two, I think. Two, six, Nine, oops, this must be an eight now, eight and six unwind. Two, two, six, six, nine, and eight. So this all looks like it's sort of working to me. I need a one to go into one of these two squares. Let's highlight that. Now, this square here can only be a seven now because we've got a one and a nine in the column. So that's a seven, that's not a seven. These two squares are a one nine pair. And let's gray them in. So for the sake of good order, seven, seven. Now you can see seven is in one of these two squares, but this seven sees this one. So that's a seven. Which means this is not a seven. Now what are we going, where are we going to put a 7 over here? Well, I guess we can put one in theory in either of those two squares. 
this one here sees this square, so this is not a one. And if we come down colorless, I think we are going to have to look into the, ah, that's it, there you go. So down here we need to place an 8, but this square sees an 8 there, so that is not 8. Hopefully that's going to, now this must be a 1, 7, 4, 1, 7, 9, 8. So 8 and 9 into these two squares. What a puzzle this is. This has been monumentally difficult. I'm going to be fascinated. If you guys tell me that I've missed something on this puzzle and I should could have got it done really quickly, I'm going to be very angry with myself. Um, so eight, nine, okay. So now this nine sees this square. So that's going to have to be one, nine, one, nine. We often get this arrangement in these uh, Knight's Move puzzles where numbers repeat along diagonals for some reason. Um, okay, now this is interesting, isn't it? Because if you got this puzzle without the Knight's Move restriction, we'd now have a problem because this is uh, you, there'd be a uniqueness issue. But I imagine one of these cells is seen by a Knight's Move in order to resolve it. Yes, this seven, look, that seven pokes in and hits that one and forces it to be an eight. So that resolves eight, nine, nine, seven, check, yes, there you go. Ethan, you're a monster, absolute monster. I'm very sorry about that, I'm, not, I'm going to shut up. 42 minutes is about the longest it's ever taken me to solve a Sudoku on the channel. Um, but you, you, some of you enjoy watching me struggle like this, um, and I hope you've got uh, your measure of Chardonnay for today. We'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.